Audison Innovation has advanced the state of car audio since 1984. Our motto, Innovative Instinct, is not just a tagline, it's how we approach everything we do. In the earliest days of our company, we saw limitations to car audio fidelity. So we introduced amplifiers with new levels of performance. In recent years, we have taken the lead in using DSP technology in a comprehensive approach. This to solve both acoustic problems in the vehicle and in challenging signal from OEM infotainment systems. Today, we launched the new Forza family of compact DSP high fidelity amplification. Ken will give you a sneak peek of the new Forza line and applying them in cars in just a moment. Ken, can you hear me? Thank you, Luca. So now we have our USB cable connected to our AF Forza amplifier. Now we will connect the other end to our PC. And the first step is to make sure we have the latest firmware. So I will install the latest firmware and this will take about 30 seconds. Since this is a clean install, we did not have any settings to save. If you are updating the firmware for a pre-existing installation, we recommend that you save your settings first so that you can load them after the firmware update is complete. You'll notice this process for updating firmware is different than some of our other products. You do not use the BitDrive PC software to update the firmware. Now we use our bootloader that downloads with your firmware download from the Audison website. So now that we have the firmware updated, I will open the BitDrive software. And you can see here, the amplifier has appeared on the list of connections. So I select it by clicking on it. And the software will perform the handshake with the amplifier. So here we have our software. And the first step that we need to do is we need to confirm that we have signal coming in to the software from the factory radio. So we're gonna just use pink noise and we will play pink noise and we are going to confirm that we have our left and right channels correct. And you will have to play it pretty loudly. And we have six channels of input lighting up. So if you balance all the way to the left, our even numbered LEDs should go out and our odd numbered LEDs should stay on. So that tells us that left is correct. So you can put the balance back in the center, maybe turn it down just a little bit and then try fading to the front. Let's see if anything happens when we fade to the front. And it looks like five and six are the rear inputs and one through four are the front inputs. So now what if we fade to the rear? And if we fade to the rear, one through four go out, five and six remain playing. Now we know that our lefts and our rights are correct, our fronts and our rears are correct, and we are ready to move on to the configuration wizard but you don't want to start the configuration wizard until you have confirmed your channel assignments and your connections are all correct. So now that we have tested left and right and front and rear, before we start the configuration wizard, I am going to check what is coming in channel one. You can see that that is a high pass signal. And channel two, you can see that that is a high pass signal. And channel three, you can see that is a low pass signal. And channel four, you can see that is a low pass signal. So after we are done with our configuration wizard, we will have a full range signal. And I will just show you here, if we sum two and four together, we will have a front full range signal. And the wizard will do that for us, but it cannot do it if we haven't made our connections properly. So it is good for us to double check. So now I will close that RTA, 
and I will start my configuration wizard here. And the first step is, do we need our optical input? If you don't need the optical input, you should turn it off and you can turn it, enable it, you can turn it on later. Next, it is asking us what the input settings are and this is two-way front plus rear. And you can see here, we have assigned all of the proper channels to two-way front plus rear. Next, it is going to set the levels for us. So Leo is going to play the USB track one so that we can set our levels. You can see that we are testing the left front tweeter channel. And what is happening during this time is that the sign sweep is being played at higher and higher levels until we detect clipping and then we stop and turn it down one click. But this is all automatic. And now we are testing the front right tweeter channel the same process. Okay, front right tweeter is set. Now we are testing left front woofer. There's the front left woofer set. Now we are starting on the front right woofer. That's the front right woofer set. Now we just have the rear speakers left and we will be finished. That is our rear left. Now we are testing rear right. And now all six channels have been set for input level. Now we will need to play the USB track three and we will test for polarity and for factory delay. And we need to go back to track one on the USB and this will set our de-equalization and we are using automatic de-equalization in the wizard. If you are an expert user and you would like to perform the de-equalization yourself by hand, then you can skip over this section and do that afterward. So if I move this out of the way, you can see here that the yellow line is the original signal from the OEM, and then the teal line underneath it is the de-equalized signal. And this is not intended to be a perfect signal, it is simply intended to be linear enough to allow us to tune the car. So now we will proceed to the next channel, front right. And front right tweeter, you can see there was a big boost here that we have removed and we are very linear through here. Now we will move to the front right, to the front left woofer. And there is the original signal for the front left woofer. Basically it has a crossover, but there is not a lot of equalization in the pass band. Shouldn't take too long. As you can see, the more input channels that you have connected to the amplifier, the longer this process will take. And as you can see, we have taken out some of that rising response. It will go to the next channel. And you can see this is more linear through here. Now we will start on the rear speakers. When you're doing this procedure, if your head unit has a repeat button, it is important that you use it so that you do not go on to the next track. And now we are de-equalizing the last of our six channel input channels, the rear right. Now when this process is complete, we will finish the wizard and then we will have the opportunity to check our results and see if there is any fine tuning that we have to do. And there is the last channel and now we will go on to the next step. And now we are reminded to stop playing the test track to avoid damage to the speakers. I have already turned down the volume to the minimum, so we don't have to worry about that. Now we get to pick our output constellation, and what we are going to pick here is two-way front plus rear plus a sub, and that would be this one here. And you can see it is already assigned one and two to the front tweeters, three and four to the front woofers, five and six to the rear speakers, and then channel seven is connected to a subwoofer. If we know the distances to all of our speakers, we can enter them here. And we can also choose whether we want to enter them in centimeters or in inches. I will select centimeters. But since we do not have those measured yet, I am going to skip past this part of the process and we can enter those 
distances later on. And now our setup is complete and you will see that the software will change color and gray out as all of the data is exchanged from our PC application to the amplifier. And that takes a few seconds. At the end of that process, the software will come back in its normal color and we will be ready to tune the system. So the first thing I'm going to do here, now that we have this work done, I'm going to save this file. And I'm also going to finalize this file so that if we turn off the car, the information will not be lost within the amplifier. The finalizing process writes this information to the non-volatile memory of the amplifier. Before we go to tuning the system, let's go look at the mixer and see what we have here. So we have the front left tweeter getting 100 and 100. We have the front left woofer getting 100 and 100. According to the polarity test, we might have to flip a polarity there. We'll test that later. And the subwoofer is 50, 50, 50, and 50. So that is a non-fading subwoofer um, that'll play no matter where you put the balance and fader. So we have finished the wizard process, and now I am going to examine our input signals to make sure they are correct polarity and aligned in phase and aligned in time. So to do that, I have to make sure I have input selected here because that allows me to go to this icon, which is the input equalizer icon. And I will select channel one. You can see there is signal coming in from channel one. And for this kind of analysis, I always change the resolution to 12th octave. And I set the refresh rate to normal. And I stretch the vertical resolution. I set this usually to 40. And I usually leave this at 80. And you can see we have some equalization remaining on both channel one and channel two. Now that's not what I'm testing right now. What I'm testing right now is this. When I add them together, does the signal disappear? Do I see one or two cancellations? Or do I see this? This is what we call a comb filter. It is a pattern of cancellations that get smaller as you move higher in frequency. And I guess it looks a little bit like a comb, which is where the name comes from. And when you see a comb filter, that means that you have delay in the factory system. So before I do anything to correct the delay, what I want to do is check the factory head unit and see if there is any kind of listening position, optimizing button or setting in the audio menu that would be causing this delay. And when we look at the radio, we discover that there is a button that is for the driver's seat and there is another button which is for all the seats. So we're gonna switch it to all the seats and see what happens. Thank you, Leo. And you can see with this vehicle, once we turn off the driver's seat optimization, all of our cancellations are gone. And that means that left and right are aligned in phase, they are aligned in time, and we even got our polarity correct because if polarity was backwards, this signal would disappear off of the chart entirely. We will do the same test with our front woofer. That is the left front woofer. This is the right front woofer. You can see they get louder. And if I add the entire front stage together, you can see that they are in phase, aligned in time. You don't see any ugly nonlinearities, which would tell us that we have a problem we have to solve. So we are ready to move forward in tuning the front stage. I will check the rear speakers. There is the left rear. There is the right rear and there are both rears. They even go off the chart here. Let me lower this a little bit. And you can see that we are in phase and aligned in time on the front and on the rear. Now what about the front and the rear? It looks like there may be a little bit of delay in use on the rear speakers, but if so, it doesn't look horrible compared to the front speakers. So we can test and try to get rid of that, but I don't think it's going to be a big problem in our tune because we're not gonna run the rear speakers very loudly 
anyway. So let's go ahead and bring back the main window of the software and we can get ready to tune. So say, take a snapshot, boom. The work notes just saved everything I've done so that we can use it later if we have any kind of computer issue. So now that we've done this, and I will finalize, device has been finalized. Now it's time for us to install the microphone and connect it to the PC. So I'm going to go get our microphone and get our USB cable. Thank you, Leo, for installing the microphone. So now I will connect my microphone to another port on my PC. I will come up here to audio settings and I will select the UMM6 USB microphone. And I already have it set to 112th octave and I already have it set to a normal averaging refresh rate. I will switch to the output side so now we are ready to turn on our acoustic RTA, which is different from the electrical RTA we were just looking at. And I am going to turn up the sensitivity for our microphone until we see some signal. There's some signal. Then I will stretch it vertically till it is right about where I want it. And now I can see that I have some audio coming from our measurement microphone. So if I close, make this smaller, I'm going to mute all of my speakers. And I am going to make sure that when I mute all my speakers that the sound gets quieter, which it does. And I'm gonna lower the noise floor here a little bit and then stretch this up a little. And I'm going to play each speaker one at a time and make sure that I have sound. And as I go through and play each speaker one at a time, I need to be confirming that the left speakers are on the left and the right speakers are on the right because if any of those are connected backwards, it will make it very difficult to get the sound that I am looking for. So before we go any farther, You'll notice that we only have seven channels in our system, and this is an eight channel amplifier. We are actually wiring the system to power a subwoofer with channels seven and eight bridged together. And we have already done that in the wiring, but we are not doing that in our signal routing yet. So I'm going to enable channel eight. And after I do that, I am going to go into channel seven and bridge, tell it that we are bridging seven and eight. And when I do that, it will go ahead and sum seven and eight together and give me a single slider to control the signal levels for seven and eight. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check with each of the speakers to make sure that they are connected correctly. And we've already done that. So we're not gonna do it again here. So I will play the front right woofer. I will turn on my RTA. I will go into the settings for my RTA and I will turn up the bass sensitivity to make sure I can see my signal, and then I will turn up the vertical sensitivity to stretch the signal up. And you can see that with my right woofer, I am not quite hitting my target curve, but I'm pretty close. I'm not playing any other speakers, so we don't have any cancellations occurring between this speaker and other speakers in the car. So what can we do to see if we can reach our target curve more carefully? What I'm going to do is I'm gonna come down here to the equalization for channel four. And you can see that channel four is color-coded yellow. And all of our adjustments here are yellow. And that means we have the correct equalizer selected. And it looks like there's a dip right here. And if I go up, you can see this is 100 Hertz and I have a slider already at 100 Hertz. So let's add some energy with our equalizer at 100 Hertz and see if it helps. And it does, it does help, whoops. Let's put it right there. You can see that that did bring up our output. So 
that's a pretty important note. We want to have some mid bass there. If we're not getting good response at 100 hertz, we may need to check the physical installation of the speaker, but I'm going to move forward and work on some other problems. There is a problem here between 250 and 400, so I'm going to select 250. I'm going to move it over just a little bit, so it is over that problem, and I'm going to raise the bandwidth, or narrow the bandwidth, I should say, so that we don't affect too many frequencies on each side. And that certainly did help a little bit. Didn't help a ton, but I don't want to add too many dB of equalization. The biggest problem we have is over here. So I'm going to go to 2500, and I'm going to use a pretty broad bandwidth, and I'm going to reduce that down like that. And you can see that we just made our response a whole lot more linear. Looks like I could do a little pickup here at about, I'll take my 1000 Hertz EQ and move it over to 825, bring that up a little. Okay, so that is better. So we can see that this is not a perfect response, but it's pretty close. Now what if I go into, oh, I can't change it here. The one thing that's really bothering me is I would like to have more mid bass here at 100. So I'm going to go back to my 100 hertz slider and I'm just going to see, wow, we already have 10 dB of boost in there. Can't really add much more. So I think we're going to turn that down a little bit and we're going to accept a compromised mid bass. And if we have to, we're going to check the installation of the speaker and make sure that it's doing what we want. Now we're going to mute the speaker and we're going to select the speaker on the other side. And you can see that the other side also has a little bit less output at 100. It, so they're going to match fairly well. Now I'm going to turn down the level on the left one because you can see it's louder than the right one. And I want them to be the same level from the driver's seat. So I'm going to turn that down to about there, maybe a little bit higher. And if I go in at 180 and turn down the bandwidth and lower the output, and I do the same thing over here at 630, I'll probably lower it just a little, and I lower the equalization, you can see that I've got a more linear response. Now at 1000, we have kind of a dip, so let's see if we can make that up. Wow, we really can. That really helped us out a lot. So we do have a little bit of mid bass or, or middle bass deficiency. So let's bring this up and let's lower this just a little bit in frequency. Put it out there and widen this out just a little. And can we pick up some of the missing? We can. So now we have a good midwoofer range. We're, we're heading from our 2000 crossover to our 80 hertz crossover fairly well. We're going to have to do some work on that mid bass to get it where we like. But you can see in general the way that we can pretty easily adjust our equalizer on top of the acoustic response indication from our acoustic RTA. And if we were to go through and tune each of the individual channels, for example, I will add in the matching tweeter. The first thing you can see is that tweeter is way loud compared to the woofer. So let's take this and lower the output level until we see a more linear response. I think I overdid it. Let's come back up a little bit. Okay, so now we have a pretty good response at 15.5 dB down. You can see the tweeter is a lot louder than the woofer, isn't it? So now I'm gonna select this channel and I want to take my 2500 Hertz EQ band, move it a little bit higher and bring that down just a hair and you'll see that we're, we're blending the two channels together pretty well. Now you can see the mechanism that's required to get a linear response from the entire vehicle. And you can make the left and the right channels match really well, which is what you need for a good stereo presentation. Now, what if you have the left and the right channels matching really well, but you would like to make some changes to the overall sound that don't compromise the stereo performance of the system? 
That's when we come up here to the final tuning equalizer. And the final tuning equalizer lets us make changes to the entire system using a five band equalizer that affects every one of the 14 output channels of our eight channel amplifier with 14 DSP process channels. So if I come here and I make this change at 1000, you see that it will affect every channel in the car. And you can see also the terms that would be used for these frequencies if you were talking to a professional audio recording engineer. So if someone says, well, I would like to have more warmth, well, I can come in here, I can take this EQ band and I can move it over here to where warmth is identified on the chart and I can add more warmth. So the final EQ is something that wasn't in our previous DSP amplifiers. It's something we have had in, in our Bit Virtuoso processor. And now we're bringing it to the DSP amplifier world. So this is how you're going to tune your system to get the overall results you want. When you're done, you're going to come back here and you're going to save the file and you're going to also finalize to the amplifier, and after that, you are done, and you're ready to listen to music. <laughs>